GitHub isn't just for coders. It's for non-coders too. Let's go check it out. Oh, wait. Hey friendos, it's DW here. Today we're talking about GitHub. Now GitHub is traditionally seen as a coding platform or social coding platform. And to be fair, it really is. But there's a lot of really valuable non-coding features or non-coder centric features that I think are really valuable to game development, specifically in game design. As I work on the Handshake project prototype, I realized that GitHub is really providing a ton of value and I haven't written a lick of code yet. So I wanted to highlight five cool features that I've come across over the last, I don't know, few weeks and show you that you don't have to be a coder to use GitHub. So let's get to it. So number one on our list is kind of an easy one and that's file version control. Now a game project usually isn't just code. It's a lot of documentation and text. So if you're clickety clacking at a keyboard and you need to keep some text and you want to keep a history of all the changes you're making to that text, Git is your friend. And now ultimately GitHub is your friend. So it tracks adding new files, removing files, editing them. And then on top of that, GitHub gives you the cloud-based hosting piece. So that way you can actually push it up into the cloud and never have to worry about losing that project if your hard drive fails or anything like that. Plus it allows you to share all of that stuff with your project team or the world if you wanna make it open source. So you might be thinking, well, aha, Git is a command line tool and I don't wanna use the command line. I'm not a developer, that's not my wheelhouse. Okay, fair enough. If you don't wanna use the command line, that's cool. There's a million different tools out there that are free, that give you a graphical interface to do all of that committing, checking in, checking out, all that kind of stuff. There's one even provided from GitHub called GitHub for Desktop, and I'll put a link in the description below. And I highly recommend checking it out. It kind of walks you through and gets you really involved with how to use and work with GitHub. And it's pretty friendly to use. So again, no excuses, version track your files so that way when you have inspiration, you ruin a project or make it perfect, you'll remember that moment in time. And number two is issue management. Now an issue in GitHub is sort of a unit of work, whether that's a new feature or a bug or a to-do list item or a question or whatever. It's just a nice way to keep yourself organized on a more detailed level. So when you have that really cool idea of a feature you wanna add or some dialogue you wanna uh, create, you can create a new issue, add it to the list, and then it's there forever until you close it. And you, this allows you to track your work and you can organize it by labeling it as questions and whatever you want. You can also set yourself goals with milestones. So if there's a set of features you want to do or a set of tasks you want to accomplish in your game design, like you know, create a series of dialogues or um, create a, wic uh, a wiki or some documentation, you can absolutely put all that stuff in issue management, set it as a milestone and kind of watch yourself accomplish that milestone over time. So again, issue management, really powerful tool that you don't need to use for code. It's just keeping yourself organized. And again, I don't know about you, but I need to get all the organizational help I can get. Number three is one of my favorites, and it's an extension of number two, which is work visualization tools. GitHub provides you with a thing called project boards. If you're more familiar with something like Trello, it's pretty much exactly the same thing with a couple extra bells and whistles tacked on because of all the different features GitHub gives you. Now, the reason I like this is it allows you to kind of track your progress across a board. So you can either use your milestones or what's to do or whatever organizational technique you want. And it gives you a nice screen of all the different work that's going on at one time. Now, it is pretty much exactly the same thing as Trello with a couple extra GitHub bells and whistles tied in. But the reason I really like it is that it keeps everything in one spot. I like using issue management to track all of my efforts, but I like to use a work visualization to see what's in progress and how things are moving along. And I can actually see where things are getting stuck or bottlenecked or kind of help me map out my process or my creative pipeline or whatever you want to call it. So work visualization tools, absolutely awesome. Number four, is documentation hosting and sharing. I know it sounds kind of boring, but when you have a game design project or game development project, you're bound to produce some documentation, whether that's a form of a game design document or just assets and different things and rules, whatever it is. Through GitHub, they provide you with not only the file version and control, which you could absolutely use with readme.mds and different things like that, but they also provide you with a wiki tab. So you can actually create a little wiki or big wiki, however you want to, however you want to slice it, and use that 
to manage all of your documentation and your game design work. And again, it's all in one spot, one project page. And I really love those features. So when you have these creative ideas and you want to do your world building, wikis give you the power that you need and they come out of the box with GitHub. So that's pretty awesome. And last but not least, number five is community. So I'm a solo developer and that's cool. But GitHub at its heart is a community of designers and developers, at least when it comes to games. So people are sharing their full content and they're actually letting you download and expose the source code if you want to. Now, we're talking about non-coders and there's actually a lot of work you can do as a non-coder, more specifically in the area of quality assurance or issue management. You can check out some of the bugs are hitting and you can actually either verify them and actually this is and actually participate in a project if you want. Or if you don't want to participate, you can just read through the, the threads and read through the comments and understand what kind of work goes into making a game that large. Or even if it's a smaller project, these people are looking for help in a lot of cases. And if you want to contribute, that's awesome. But you can definitely learn from their experiences. And GitHub facilitates that by providing that whole community of games. So I highly recommend checking that out. I'll leave a link in the description um, for finding that game section that GitHub actually hosts for everyone to explore. So very cool stuff. And that's it, my friends, we are done. So those are five easy ways that GitHub makes game making easier for non-coders. I know there's some code stuff mixed in there and there are definitely some more coding related things or more technical features that I didn't cover. I'll save that for a different video. I really wanted to emphasize how powerful GitHub can actually be in making your work not only backed up and versioned, but providing you some organizational tools and stuff like that around your project and your progress. So thumbs up to GitHub, I'd definitely check it out. In the meantime, thank you for watching, and if you could have yourself a pleasant day and or evening, that'd be wonderful. Take care.